Hi everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to take a sneak preview of this week's solar eclipse in the sign of Gemini. So I think we may actually do a two-part series on this one. We may reconvene on the actual day of the eclipse, um, and maybe I'll do some live eclipse readings or something like that. Maybe I'm thinking a live stream on the actual day of the eclipse. Today, what I want to do is take this eclipse through all 12 of the signs, uh, all 12 of the houses, I should say, and give you a sense of... Um, what to expect and some of the good news that might come through this eclipse, because I have a feeling that this eclipse is actually pretty auspicious overall. Before I do that, I want to remind everybody, my new classes start now in less than one week. So um, I'm plugging them uh, one last week here, and let's take a look at my website. So my new class, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystics, starts this Sunday. It's coming up really quickly now. If you go to my page, nightlightastrology.com, click on the courses tab, the first year course, you can learn all about it. You have until Sunday to use the early bird rate and sign up, uh, saving $500 off when you pay in full. There is a payment plan if you need it. There's also tuition assistance for people who are in need. Um, it's going to be a really fantastic group. I'm really looking forward to it. Orientation material went out on Friday. So we have um, where the, the process has begun. Um, I'm really excited. The program consists of about 100 hours worth of amazing content. Uh, focused on uh, the techniques and practices of ancient astrology, as well as the um, spiritual philosophy of astrology. And this program is not only about how to read charts for other people, if that's your goal, but it's also about how to make astrology a daily spiritual practice. And um, this is something that, you know, in my, in my opinion, if you learn this skill, you have something that very few people have, which is something like a cosmic GPS program throughout your whole life. It's super helpful to know how to read um, what the planets are up to because um, it's, it's like having the weather app on your phone, but you get to have your own version of it and your own interpretive abilities, your own relationship with the, um, with the weather, which is pretty unique. So at any rate, I teach the program live through webinars, but people participate remotely from all over the world. Some people um, will follow along through the recordings. Um, other people are there live. There's recommended homework, reading assignments. Um, we have guest teachers that come in throughout the course. There's breakout study sessions. There's I have a staff of tutors that are there to help people. Um, so we try to make it as personal as possible for you know online courses these days. Sometimes that's a little tough, but we try to make it as personal as we can. I'm available throughout the year via email. Um, again, we have a staff full of uh, tutors. Lots of help there for you if you need it. And uh, there's lots of Q&A in the actual classrooms as well. In the last part of the program, we have live clients come in. I read for them and then break down the sessions for you, show you how the craft and uh, techniques are applied. We talk about counseling. We talk about um, you know, how to use astrology in really meaningful ways as, um, as counselors. So um, if you're interested, check it out on my website. Like I said, nightlightastrology.com. If you have any questions about it, feel free to email me info at nightlightastrology.com. And remember you have until Sunday to sign up. So um, that being said, let's dive into uh, the solar eclipse this week, which is, it's a big deal. One of the reasons that it's such a big deal here, I'm going to pull it up on the screen. Here's the real time clock. One of the reasons that it's a big deal is because this eclipse is going to happen on the same day that Mercury ends up being Kazemi. It's a very empowered day for Mercury. So watch what happens here. The uh, moon currently in Taurus, nice exalted placement for a dark moon. Now uh, you might be feeling that kind of, you're at the end of a cycle. Um, my weekend was spent, by the way, uh, with Mars opposing Pluto, uh, my uh, girls and my wife all got sick with a cold. We had to get tested for COVID, strep throat, thankfully um, negative, but uh, a nice cold that went around our family. So um, we, we watched a lot of Harry Potter, um, uh, which I have a funny story about. Maybe I'll tell later. Anyway, so here's what's happening. The moon is coming into the conjunction with the sun. That's a new moon. And that's going to be taking place on June 10th. So that's Thursday, June 10th. That's the day of our eclipse this week. In the meantime, look at what's happening. On the day of the eclipse, Mercury is also conjoined with the sun. And that conjunction through the same degree between the 10th and the 11th 
is what we call a Kazemi. It means that the planet is at the heart of the sun, sort of like seated on the throne. This is really important because the sun is in Mercury's sign. That means that um, Mercury is protected from the beams of the sun. It's said to be in its own chariot. That typically when Mercury is retrograde, it goes through the beams of the sun in a, in a retrograde period. You know, Mercury stuff will take a real dive. It might, it might go through delays, reversals, or twists of circumstance that are sometimes challenging or difficult. Now, when Mercury is in its own sign, like Virgo or Gemini, uh, for example, the nice thing is that Mercury being in its own sign plays host to the sun and is therefore protected from the worst case scenario. When you take it one step further and Mercury is not only protected, but then Kazemi, which means greatly empowered, there's like a great fusion of sun Mercury energy. Um, that means that there's something really, there's really is something very special and positive, And in my opinion, very auspicious about this eclipse. So what I want to do today is I want to run it through the 12 whole signs, depending on your rising sign, and just give you like quick hits that I've written down for each of the 12 signs in terms of what the message, what might be for you. Now, when I say message, I mean, I, I say the word message because Mercury is the messenger. And when Mercury is Kazemi, it's often as though there's a very empowered um, message or idea or ideal that starts coming through um, like an intention would or a, a new idea or um, a piece of information or maybe even an ally or a resource or something very beneficial, whether it's, again, uh, something that clicks inside of our head or someone or something in the environment that provides us with some kind of resource that's really helpful. But that Kazemi is a powerful moment for an already more beneficial Mercury retrograde than a typical one. And also the other thing that's really profound about this eclipse is that remember Jupiter's just ingressed into the sign of Pisces. And so Jupiter in Pisces has what we call a superior square to the sign of Gemini. So there's, there's actually Jupiterian support right now. So one of the things that I'm looking at for this eclipse is the idea of forms of support, new ideas, reorganization, uh, or, or redistribution of, of assets and energy. Um, almost like, you know, if you, for example, um, I'm going to talk about this a little bit with my own rising sign Taurus, almost like if you have a, a new innovative way of doing business or of organizing your books, or you get a new bookkeeper, or you get a new piece of technology that makes your life easier. I get the feeling that there are a lot of good resources to be gained from this eclipse. And, um, also I get the feeling that there's real insight coming through. Remember that the sun in general is emblematic of higher truth. Um, so if we, our, our lives are aimed at all sorts of ideals, most of them are very temporary. Like, what do I want this day to be like? Or what do I want, um, uh, you know, my marriage to be like, or my family or something like that. And um, in ancient astrology, the ideal that we have that we set our sights on, uh, you know, we may or may not reach it depending on circumstance, depending on fate, depending on, depending on karma. Um, when you have a solar eclipse, there's often this feeling of a changing ideal that some, some, some uh, ideal image that we have our eyes set on that we are intending toward is going to shift dramatically. And when Mercury, the messenger is Kazemi, greatly empowered at the heart of the sun, uh, it's like given the seal of the king, like the king is sending you to a foreign land and you have the seal of the king, like you're an ambassador, uh, you have the power of the king. It, it makes me feel as though an ideal or a vision is shifting and resources, messengers, or information is being empowered to help that ideal or to help change something to become more ideal. So I think those are some of the most positive significations of the eclipse. Now it's going to affect everybody differently, depending on where it lands in your chart. If it's hitting any planets, if it's hitting any angles in the chart, those are very important details that we always have to pay attention to. And again, what is the purpose of doing all of this is not to get all, you know, high on uh, high on the dramas of our life. It's to understand, you know, where sort of where things are, how things are moving. It's important to understand what kind of season we're in, what kind of changes are coming in which areas of our life. The more conscious we are, the more consciously we get to participate in those changes. Um, and we can bring our spiritual lives along or our, our, our lives are, um, you know, alchemized by the, the um, spirituality that we bring into uh, these seasons that we look at through astrology. So, all right, let's take a look at all 12 signs. Again, these are just going to be like little brief 
um, just kind of meant to be brief little hits of insight for what the eclipse might bring, depending on your rising sign. Okay, so first we're going to go to the day of the eclipse. Now we are going to, um, I decided to be um, conformist again today. Sorry, everybody. We're going to start with Aries and go through because it's just easier when you're breaking it up um, in the, uh, whatever, in the uh, chapter tags or whatever that, that we do in the YouTube posting. Okay, so if you are an Aries rising, where will this land? it lands in your third house. When I think of the third house, I think about the mind and the impact that the immediate environment has on the mind or that the mind has on the immediate environment. If your mind changes, your environment will change. Your associations within the environment will change. If the environment changes, it'll change and influence your mind. So I think about this as an opportunity for you, if you're an Aries rising, to change your mind or change the environment for the sake of better health of mind and to get real insights or opportunities or good resources to come in and help you with that. So that's my main takeaway for you if you're an Aries rising. If you're a Taurus rising, this lands in your second house. And I think about this as resources, revisions, new ideas, and insights, a shifting ideal around money, around business, around um assets or management of assets and resources around getting your ducks in a row with regard to, um, you know, like this is my rising sign and I'm thinking about, um, you know, data. I'm currently organizing, reorganizing data, have to go to the DMV to get, you know, license plates from Minnesota because we moved here from DC. So there's a lot of like just getting your assets, resources, um, files, in order changes around business finances. I'm I hired a few new people to help out with my programs, um, stuff like that. So uh, changes around business and money, I think um, potentially very positive and watch for the inspiration to come in this week as well. All right. So if we go forward to uh, Gemini on the ascendant, and this is in your first house, well, it's all about your own body, your own appearance, your own self image. Um, your own uh, sense of self and direction in life. So I like this as a real moment of like lucidity personally. Who am I? What am I doing? Um, where am I going with my life? How do I feel about my physical body or health? Um, and it's uh, there's resources or aha moments or insights, epiphanies that can be had that could kind of help you get back in the driver's seat a little bit. Remember the ascendant was called the helm of the ship by ancient astrologers. It's like the steering wheel. It's the, we're not always in control, of course, but the, the, to the degree that we have some little piece of control in our lives, um, the, it's usually you're going to see things around the first house related to it. So I like this as a moment of clarity or insight, redirecting your vision for yourself, your health, getting in better control of your life to the extent that you're able to. All right, now let's push this forward to Cancer on the Ascendant. Cancer on the Ascendant, of course, you're going to have the eclipse in a difficult house, the 12th house. But what I like about this in terms of the Kazemi and the idea of an insight or a changing vision is to really look at, you know, how have I been my own worst enemy or what's in the shadows or what's my blind spot? Um, the 12th house compared to the first was in an aversion to the first house. So it's literally in Greek optical theory, considered a blind spot in the chart. So what's in your blind spot? And you may actually become aware of what's in your blind spot right now. And I think that that could be um, really helpful. And, and some, so, so it's not necessarily... Um, you know, the worst thing in the world, but, but real insight that can help you make changes because you're able to see and gain some uh, sense of help or support by understanding things a little bit better. All right. So if we move forward to Leo rising, this is going to put the eclipse in your 11th house. Now the 11th house is the place of groups, friends, allies, um, people who support you. I would think of this really as the people that you associate with professionally, personally, religiously, politically, philosophically, sharing similar values um, as yourself. And there may be new resources coming in, a new group of people or changes within a, a social or professional network of some kind. But I like there being opportunities here for new collaborations, changing values that change relationships, in the broader context of your life and your long-term goals, perhaps especially your professional goals, since the 11th was often related to your professional ambitions and collaborators or benefactors or, um, you know, allies professionally. So something there is shifting for you if you're a Leo rising, and I think it's going to be pretty positive. Now, 
with Virgo rising, we put this into your 10th house and the opportunities of the Mercury Kazemi and the eclipse have everything to do with your professional trajectory. So what are you doing with your life? Um, what are you doing at work? What has your title changing? Are you launching a new business? Are you revising an existing business? Are there changing changes happening within the structure of the workplace that you um, that you go to every day? Are you changing in terms of learning new skills or implementing new techniques or approaches to something, new technologies even? But there's changes in the workplace for sure and the opportunity to um, perhaps get your values more aligned um, with your your, you know, your, your, as your inner values are shifting, maybe the workplace needs to shift as well. So there's an alignment happening there. All right. So if you're a Libra rising, we put this into your ninth house and you could say that there's something shifting there around the world of higher education, um, or religion or philosophy. If you think about how and why we act in the world, the way that we do, we're all social political animals to some extent, we all have skin in the game, whether we like it or not. But what are our guiding beliefs, philosophies, principles, ethics in a larger social sense? These might be changing right now due to some epiphanies or realizations that you're having, some training that you're seeking, a teacher that you're finding. So for Libras, I love this space of the eclipse around um, you know, your guiding principles and beliefs changing for the better right now or getting some really good insights about them. All right, if you're a Scorpio rising, this lands in your eighth house. Again, could be considered a difficult house. But the eighth house is a place that also puts us in touch with our soul bonds with other people, what we owe other people karmically and what they owe us karmically. There's a lot of that in this lifetime, of course. Some of it's very good and, you know, mutually beneficial. Some of it's very entangling. So, you know, some of it's codependent, some of it's healthy dependence. Um, so I think right now sorting out uh, the good kind of help from the bad kind of help, the good kind of um, help that you give or the good kind of help that you get versus the not so healthy kind that you get or give. Also a new resource coming in from other people, a grant, a loan, uh, some, your, uh, you know, a spouse getting a new job. Uh, so, so someone or something else in your life that may be of uh, benefit or use to you right now. And um, I like that because of the Kazemi with Mercury, especially. All right, so if you're a Scorpio rising, those are a few quick hits on what I think might be coming through. Now, if you're a Sagittarius rising, the eclipse is happening in your seventh house. Now, that's going to be the marriage house, relationship house. Um, you know, Mercury Kazemi in that house could very well be, especially because it's retrograde, um, meeting someone from the past and or um, having empowered communication with someone, um, a breakthrough or an insight that's coming through your relationship and uh, meeting someone new. Um, but it's a pivotal moment of empowerment within relationships. Could be something that's happening for a spouse or partner that's very empowering. Could be some kind of change within a relationship itself. But I like the idea of insight into um, relationships or um, empowered communication or new opportunities coming in through um, people that you might be closer to, like the closer personal relationships being um, really beneficial to you right now. Okay, so if we go forward just a little bit, put Capricorn on the Ascendant, you know, again, slightly difficult house in the sixth. Mercury's Kazemi with the sun right after the eclipse on June 10th, um, you're going to have in a place that's associated with work and frustration and difficulty and sometimes sickness. Well, what I like about this is, to me, this is a problem-solving transit. And you see a solar eclipse with Mercury Kazemi in the sixth. The first thing that came to my mind that I wrote down was problem-solving, ingenuity, coming up with interesting solutions to challenging problems. So yeah, you might be dealing with some kind of problem or breakdown or frustration, but the great news of this eclipse is that there's the creativity, the originality, uh, the risk-taking ability of um, a pretty innovative Mercury to figure out some way around the problem that you're encountering. So I like this as a, a problem-solving transit for Capricorns. Uh, so if we go forward to Aquarius rising, we take this into the fifth house. Now, you know, the Mercury Kazemi with the sun in the fifth, to me, could be a very empowered moment of creativity. So the, you think of the fifth house, you think it's called the joy of Venus, a place associated with creativity and the arts with joy and, you know, um, fun. I, I like this as a moment of insight or creative breakthrough. If you're a writer, if you're a singer or songwriter or something like that. Uh, also a moment of um, 
gathering some kind of resources that you need for creative collaboration or having some kind of breakthrough in terms of, uh, you know, like if you're a musician, I think you plateau sometimes, at least, you know, my little ability to play my guitar. I, I know that <clears throat> even as an astrologer, you get into spaces where you kind of feel like you're stuck and you're not growing and then you have a breakthrough and there's a lot of joy and feeling like there's creative, the creative juices are flowing again. So I like this as an empowered moment of creative um, like a creative buildup or breakthrough. It could be sexual. It could be romantic. Um, it could also be something to do with pregnancy, like learning that you're getting news that you're pregnant or something like that. But it's a very empowered moment of, of creativity for Aquarians right now and changes uh, relative to children. Um, I would not be surprised to see some Aquarian Aquarius rising. People find out that they're about to have twins with, uh, with this one, for example. Oh, you're pregnant. Oh, and guess what? We also found twins on the uh, ultrasound or whatever. Okay, that'd be, if anyone actually encounters that, please let me know. Okay, so Pisces rising. Now, Pisces rising takes the eclipse as well as the Kazemi and puts it into the fourth house. I like this as a moment of, um, you know, clarity within the home environment, within family. Okay, then on the dark side of things, <clears throat> at least slightly darker, you could have some kind of, um, insight around family karma you know like one of those insights where you're like oh now i understand some element of my own you know some of my own psychological complexes i understand because i have some insight into my family into how i was raised so sometimes that kind of clarity doesn't always come easily you know it comes through you know hitting a wall with something or or realizing the shortcomings of a family member but either way the insight would probably be very liberating on the other hand, you could just see this as a moment of revising something around the home, um, refinancing your house or re rearranging the living room or just making changes around the home living space somehow. This could also be about um, an, a, an empowered moment of change in general around family karma. It's just insight, healing, transformation and growth that would be pretty positive around family. You could also find ways of making your life easier. Like, I mean, it could be this, this mundane, right? But maybe you get a new refrigerator and it's just, you know, it solves some kind of problem. It's technological changes in the home that could make your life easier. Um, but I like this as a moment for Pisces, especially as um, a pretty empowering moment for you personally, because Jupiter, your home planet is just ingressed into your first house as well. So identity change around and, and coinciding with changes around home and family that feel pretty positive right now. All right. So if we, um, uh, that's, I think we did, we did it. We, we did it. We went all the way around. So I was like, let's just keep going. We'll just do it all over again. All right. So, um, I'll leave you with my funny Harry Potter story in case you, uh, wanna, <laughs> in case you want to hear something, uh, hilarious. So this is very Mercury Neptune, uh, Mercury, of course, squared to Neptune over the weekend. And uh, which can result in um, <laughs> can result in like funny slips of tongue or like kind of like Freudian slips and stuff like that. And, um, m you know, the girls are sick. My wife is fighting off getting sick, too. And we're like, well, what are we going to my wife's like, well, what do you want to do tonight? And, you know, we've been watching the Harry Potter movies with my older daughter. And um, <laughs> so I looked at my wife and I go, Harry P. <laughs> I go, Harry P. <laughs> she, she looks at me and she's like, what? <laughs> I was like, Harry Potter. And she starts, she starts cracking up. She was like, so <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, that uh, sounds, that uh, sounds really inappropriate. Doesn't it? <laughs> so, uh, you know, anytime you think of Harry Potter, just remember, um, use some other uh, slang to refer to Harry Potter, a Potter other than Harry P. <laughs> so, all right, that's what I've got for you guys. I hope you guys have a great week, lots more content to come. We're going to probably do, like I said, a live stream on the actual, um, on the actual day of the eclipse. And uh, then we'll, we'll be doing some previewing of next week's Uranus Saturn uh, square, which is coming back. And I've got a few more Q and a episodes with Kat that we did. So lots to look forward to this week. I hope you guys are having a great Monday and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.